Good morning to everybody and welcome to church this morning. So glad that you're in the Lord's house this day on this beautiful Sunday morning. If you're a visitor or a guest, we especially welcome you to First United Methodist and hope you feel very much at home. We welcome those who are joining us online. We welcome you to downtown Lake Charles. Just a few announcements to bring to your attention as we begin our time of worship. First, the flowers on the altar this morning, beautiful flowers, are given in honor of Joyce Pace's 93rd birthday. So Joyce, congratulations. So proud of you, so thankful for you. <laughs> Ash Wednesday services will be on Friday, February 14th at 12 noon and 6 p.m. We'll have a light lunch in Paxton Hall following the noon service, and everyone is invited as we begin the season of Lent. That's on Wednesday, February 14th. Reverend Stephanie's going to share a couple of announcements with us that she did last week. So, Stephanie? Good morning. I just wanted to remind you that our beat event is going to be on Saturday at 10 o'clock. We'll be eating a brunchy kind of food, then talking about the history of the beads, prayer beads, and the making our own set. You can register up until the day of. I need um, kind of a head count, and we're just asking for $10 a piece. Then the next Wednesday on the 7th, yes, the 7th, we're going to be starting our Bible study on Lectio Divino, which is an ancient prayer technique used by the church for hundreds and hundreds of years, and we would love for you to come. It is five weeks, and it's going to be on Wednesdays from 10 at 10 and at 6. Thank you. Two other quick announcements. Super Bowl is coming in two weeks, February the 11th. Our church is doing like we did last year. We're asking for our members and friends to bring a can of soup that day for like soup or -er, Super Bowl. We're collecting soup and we're going to bring it to local food pantries. So two weeks from today, if you remember, bring a can of soup with you to church. And then the last one, our four-week churchwide Lenten Bible study begins on Sunday, February the 18th, a few weeks from today. Our meal at 5.30 p.m., our study at 6 p.m. in Paxton Hall. I'll be leading the study entitled, The Third Day, Living the Resurrection. So I hope you'll circle that date on your calendar and you'll plan on attending each week. And now let's worship the Lord together.
God loves us with a steadfast love. God loves us so much he gave us his son. God loves us with a great love, rich in mercy. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for us. Help us to love others. Help us to demonstrate your love in real and practical ways today and throughout our lives. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing, number 400. to come at this time. Thank you, though. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given you birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. To the parents, I ask of you now this question. Do you this day turn away from your sins and confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, you answer. I do. And do you promise to bring up Bo in the church and by your teaching and example to guide him to accept God's grace for himself, to follow Christ openly, and to lead a Christian life? Let us pray. Dear Lord, in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John, anointed by your spirit, he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. And now, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this one who is baptized today to cleanse him and surround him with your love all his life. Amen. Oh. 
Bo, it will be. Bo, I baptize you this day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I present to your love and care this day, Bo Fear, whom we recognize to be a member of the family of God. They let the choir look. <laughs> I'm going to give him back to Mama. And to the congregation, if you would respond with the response in your bulletin. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that surrounded by steadfast love may be established in the faith and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. God bless y'all. Yeah. <laughs> At this time, we invite the children to come for the children's story. So kids, wherever you are, come on down to the front. Miss Ann has a message for you. Wanna come sit over here? Hey buddy. <laughs> Wanna sit right here? Say don't touch me. <laughs> there we go. He said, well, let's see. Maybe the piano would be a good place for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am so glad to see all of you this morning. It's kind of cold outside, isn't it? It's a cold morning, but I'm glad you're here. I'm going to tell you a story today about my friend Dennis. Dennis went fishing when he was a little boy, and he loved to fish. He had this little boat. And he liked to go out on the river. And so he got in his little boat. He paddled out kind of in the middle. And it was real smooth. And he stood up and he took a rope and he threw the rope. And he caught it on a rock. So then he kind of wiggled and he said, oh, I think it's on really good. I think it'll stay there. So boy, he got his fishing line out, and he threw it out, and he waited, and he waited. He wasn't catching any fish. So what happened when everything's calm and quiet and hot? He fell asleep. He fell asleep in his boat, and as the boat rocked, that rope just came right off that rock. And his boat started going down the river. And when he opened his eyes, he was right at a place where he was getting ready to get into all these big rocks and it was going to take a dip down. And his heart was pounding and his little boat turned over and he hung on till it landed on a sandbar. And when he stood up, he was like, whew. He learned a lesson that day. And the lesson was, you better tie the rope good onto that rock. You know, boys and girls, in the book of Psalms, Paul tells us that we have a rock. That we have a rock when things are good, when things are bad. When we just need to be alone by ourselves, we can hold on to our rock, being God, our rock. He's always there. And he says, when you need him, you just need to pray. You need to talk to him every day. Hold on to your rock. Tie yourself closely to the rock so that when things don't work out too good or when things are really good, 
You can have your rock to lean on. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we just thank you today for being our rock. We thank you that we always have you, that we just have to remember that you're just a prayer away. Lord, let us go out this week and serve you. Amen. Okay, thank you, Miss Ann. Our hymn is What Wondrous Love Is This, number 292. We'll sing the first and last verses. Please remain seated. Please join me as we share together the Psalter found on page 832. Please stand. It is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright. I will sing of the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who pleasured in them. Who hath caused his wonderful works to be remembered? The Lord is gracious and merciful. be seated.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we sit here in the quietness of this hour, help us to relax for a few minutes. Help us to clear our minds of all those things that are bothering us and troubling us today. Help us to clear our minds of all anxieties, all fear, all worries, and for these few minutes to think about you, the creator of all things, our Heavenly Father. Lord, help us to focus on your power, to focus on your strength, to focus on your wisdom, to think about your incredible love and your mercy in our lives. Forgive us, Lord, for getting so caught up in ourselves that we sometimes forget to think about you. I pray, dear Lord, for this coming week for all of us. I pray for a good week for us. Help us to be aware of your constant presence with us to face anything that might come our way. And Lord, I pray for each person on our prayer list today and for all of those who are sick and in trouble. Hear our prayers this day in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we're reading from the book of John, the Gospel of John. So if you're able, please stand with me. We're reading from chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Thank you. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miracle signs, miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with them. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one else can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb just to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, Jesus said, and you don't understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify of what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly thing, things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the son of man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him must have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the good news of the word of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Well, we have some big games this afternoon. As we do every year at this time, I like to see who we're, who we're pulling for. Let's do the first game. We have the Chiefs and the Ravens. You have the Kansas City Chiefs with Taylor Swift, <laughs> and you have the Ravens. So it's not um, who you think's gonna win, but who you're pulling for. Who's going for the Kansas City Chiefs and Taylor? Okay, we got a bunch of Swifties here. Mm -hmm. Who's going for the Ravens? Who's not watching? Okay, Taylor won. Second game, the Lions and the 49ers. Who's going for the Detroit Lions? 
Who's going for the 41ers? <laughs> Who's not watching? The Lions won that one. It'll be interesting to see. I'm preaching, as you know, several sermons on the Gospel of John. Today we come to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. I want to introduce somebody to us this morning. His name is Nicodemus. Now, his name is a little bit strange in our day and time, Nicodemus. I don't personally know anybody by the name of Nicodemus. I have a nephew whose name is Nicholas. I know several people named Nick. We have a church member, a young man, who's named Nikolai, but I don't know anybody named Nicodemus. I dated Stevie Nicks in high school, and I broke up with her because she kept wearing the same outfit all the time. It's no more. I'm just joking. I did not really date Stevie, Stevie in high school. But y'all were believing it, weren't you? I could tell. Our scripture for today begins with these words. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who's come from God, for no one could perform the signs that you were doing if God was not with him. He's only mentioned now three times in the whole Bible, but all three times are found right here in the Gospel of John. And those three times tell us some very important things about this man. First of all, our friend Nicodemus had a lot of money. Now, most of the time, Jesus hung out with common people, but not this time. Nicodemus was somebody who had a lot of money. For example, and the reason we know this, after the crucifixion of Jesus, it was this man, Nicodemus, who brought a hundred pounds of spice for the body of Christ to be embalmed. That took a lot of money. Nicodemus had that money. He was a rich man. So obviously, Nicodemus had a lot of money. Something else about this man, Nicodemus, he was a Pharisee. The first verse of our gospel reading for today says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who is a member of the Jewish ruling council. Now think about the Pharisees for just a minute. In some ways, they were the best and the holiest people in the whole country. Over 6,000 men at the time of Jesus were Pharisees. They were holy, devout men who had sworn to follow every word of God. And Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Now, the Pharisees basically did not like Jesus of Nazareth. But Nicodemus was different. He had an open mind. And so he went to see Jesus one night, and he called him rabbi, teacher. He had an open mind. Something else about Nicodemus is known. He was a leader of the Jews. That's what John says. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling council of the Jews. The Sanhedrin had 70 men, Pharisees and Sadducees, and one of those 70 men was Nicodemus. So here is our friend Nicodemus that I'm introducing to us today. He's a rich man, he's a Pharisee, and he's a leader of the Jews. Now I have to ask this question. Isn't it a little bit strange for this rich man, Nicodemus, to go visit this poor carpenter from Nazareth? Isn't it a little bit strange for this leader of the Jews, this member of the Sanhedrin, this powerful Jewish person, to go visit with somebody who had turned the religious world upside down? Isn't it a little bit strange for him to go visit this carpenter from Nazareth? To me, it's very strange, but that was Nicodemus. Something else that's a little bit strange to me, the Gospel of John makes a point of it. He went to see Jesus at night. I want us to hear the second verse again. Now, there was a man, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish council. He came to Jesus at night. He came to Jesus at night. So I have to stop as I read this scripture and ask the question, why did he go to see Jesus at night? A possible answer is that Jesus had so many people around him all the time during the day people who wanted to talk to him, who were asking for a miracle, had all kind of questions. He was surrounded by people all the time, and at nighttime, 
Perhaps this was a chance where Nicodemus could talk to him. Here's another reason. It could be that he went at night because he was a little bit embarrassed to be seen with Jesus. Don't forget, he was rich, he was powerful, he was a leader of the Jews. Perhaps he was a little bit embarrassed to be seen in the presence of Jesus. That's what John Wesley, the founder of our church, said in his commentary. He said that Nicodemus was ashamed. He didn't want anyone to know that he had spoken with Jesus. And so he went at night. Now, for me personally, as I read this scripture and as I think about it and pray about it, it goes beyond that. The night is a time of darkness. And I think that's where Nicholas was in his heart. That's where Nicodemus was in his heart, in his soul. The Gospel of John says he went to see Jesus at night. It was darkness in his life. It was darkness in his soul. Now, all of us here today know this. Nighttime is a scary time, a little bit. Little children today are afraid of the dark. Some grown-ups today are afraid of the dark. That's why we have little night lights all around our house. Darkness can be frightening. Henry David Thoreau, in his famous essay on solitude, wrote this, I believe that men are still a little afraid of the dark, the darkness. I think back to my first summer camp when I was in Boy Scouts at Chico State Park. I was 11 years old. The first night out there at summer camp was really kind of scary. Our scout master was so kind, he showed the boys that night a movie called The Mummy Returns. <laughs> it starred Boris Karloff. Welcome to summer camp, little Weldon, who's never been to summer camp. The mummy returns. I wanted my mummy. <laughs> I was terrified. Every night out there was scary. I was away from home. I was in a strange cabin out in the woods with people that I didn't know. It was dark. I couldn't fall asleep. I kept on thinking about the mummy and I kept staring out the screen window of the cabin. I, big mistake, I should have pulled the sleeping bag over my head, but I just kept staring out of the window. And the moonlight was playing tricks on things, and the trees to me started looking like monsters, and the bushes started looking like Egyptian mummies, and I could hear the owls shrieking, and it sounded like Egyptians screaming and crying. And I mean, I was really scared. It was that summer camp where I lost my hair. I've pinpointed that. <laughs> Boy Scout summer camp. I was in bad shape out there for a few nights. Darkness can really be a frightening thing. George Harrison has a great triple album, solo album, entitled... He has a song on it entitled, Beware of Darkness. You know, a lot of people today, like Nicodemus, experience darkness in their lives. Their lives today are just engulfed in darkness, like Nicodemus was. For example, some people today in our community are experiencing the darkness, the nighttime of sickness. They've been healthy all their lives, but not today. The doctors called back and said, hey, I need you to come see me. Something has come up on the x-ray that I don't like. Some people in this community today are very sick. Some people in our church today are very sick. They hurt every hour of every day. They're in misery. They're in pain. The darkness of sickness just surrounds them. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night in the darkness. Some people today are in the darkness of loneliness. It's a growing problem in our culture. Hank Williams saying, I'm so lonesome, I could cry. King David, who wrote the 23rd Psalm and was called a man after God's own heart, was so lonely that he wrote, darkness is my only friend. The scripture says he came to Jesus by night in the darkness. Some people today or in the darkness of rejection. They've been told, hey, I'm sorry, but you're not the one. You don't quite make the standard. Our, our, our grade's a little bit higher than this. They feel like a terrible failure. They feel rejected. Suddenly, everything in their lives is turned upside down, and they're in the dark. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. 
Some people today are experiencing the nighttime, the darkness of family troubles. How painful to have such high hopes for a child or a grandchild only to see that child take the wrong road and do the wrong things. How painful to have turmoil in the family, to have conflicts between parents and children or brothers and sisters. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night in the darkness. Some people today are in the darkness of unbelief. They say, well, I'm a United Methodist or I'm a Catholic or I'm a Baptist or whatever, but deep down inside where it counts, they don't have faith. The church means nothing to them. They don't care about reading the Bible. They don't care about praying or supporting the church. The kids in the family are not taught about the church because the parents have no faith. The darkness of unbelief, you know what that means? It means this, every crisis in their life that they face, they have to face completely alone. Nicodemus came to Jesus in the dark at night. Some people today are in the darkness of grief. Tragedy has struck their lives and they've lost somebody who means the whole world to them. That's one of the most painful things in the world for somebody that you love so much to pass away. The pain is so real and the darkness can linger. He came to Jesus by night. Some people today are in the darkness of addiction. They struggle with alcohol or drugs or unhealthy places on the internet. Our friend Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Nighttime is a time of darkness and his soul was in the dark. I want to ask of us a personal question this morning, and I hope you think about it. Can you identify in some way with Nicodemus? Is there perhaps darkness in your life today? Is it nighttime in your soul right now? If that's the case, and I just want to tell you with everything that I hold on to, today is the best time in the world to come to Jesus Christ, the light of the world. In the darkness of life, this is the time to come to him. He came to the one who called himself the light of the world. Here's one of the greatest things about this story. Jesus was available that night. He was available. I'm sure Jesus had a tough day. He had crowds of people all around him. He always had somebody who wanted to talk to him, sick people who always wanted to be be healed. And now the end of the day has come. Jesus is finally finished with all that. He can kick back and relax and rest. But no, there's one more person who wanted to talk to Jesus. There's one more person who wanted to ask him some questions. Jesus was available for that one person. Even though he was wiped out, even though he was so tired, he made time for that one person. And that's what Jesus still does today. He makes time for you, and he makes time for me. He doesn't care about the size of the audience. He had spoken to as many as 15,000 people. But here was one person, and Jesus spent all that time talking with him. Think about that incredible conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. It was nighttime in the heart of that man. He was searching, but in the darkness, Jesus gave to Nicodemus a word of hope. He pointed to the possibility of starting over, of being born again. Isn't that great news that the Lord offers to you and to me the chance to start all over of being born again, a second chance at life? And then he said to Nicodemus, the greatest verse perhaps in the whole Bible, in the dark, At night, to Nicodemus, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He talked about starting over. He talked about the love of God. I read several years ago a really good biography about Harry Houdini, the great magician and escape artist. His wife was named Bess. He really loved Bess. Every time that he'd go out of town, he would sit down and he would write love letters to 
the best because he knew he was going to be out of town. And he would tape those love letters or hide those love letters all over the place, in the kitchen, in the basement, in the den, under a picture, in an old boot. He hid them all over the place. And those letters always began in the same way. Dear Bess, you'll never know how much I really love you. Now, here's the interesting fact. Ten years after he died, she was still finding those notes all over the place. Again, in an old shoe, in the basement, under a bottle, taped behind a picture in a closet upstairs. Ten years after he died, she would find those notes. Dear Bess, you'll never know how much I really love you. This morning, I just believe with all my heart, that's what Jesus Christ is saying to each one of us today. He calls out your name in the hidden places of life, and he says, you'll never know how much I really love you. He says to us in the darkness, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only son. John chapter 3, the story of Nicodemus. I hope that, like Nicodemus, we will come to Jesus today, even if it's darkness in our lives, especially if it's darkness in our lives. And let's hear the Lord say to us, you'll never know how much I really love you. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this marvelous story in the scripture. Lord, help us to be like Nicodemus and not be afraid to come to you, even if things are so dark in our lives. And as we do, Lord, give us faith to hear the words of Jesus. As Jesus says to us, you will never know how much I really love you. Hear our prayers this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now we affirm our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed found in your order of worship. Let us stand as we do so. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, bless this offering that the good news of our Savior might be proclaimed in this community and around the world. Amen. Please be seated.
closing hymn this morning is number 378, Amazing Grace. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 6. 1, 2, and 6. And as we do, we open the doors of the church every Sunday morning. If the Lord is leading you to give your life to Christ today and united membership here at this church, I'd love to talk with you and visit with you, invite you to come to the front. Sometimes we're a little too shy to come to the front. If that's the case, just pull me aside some Sunday, and I'll be so happy to pray with you privately or to talk to you about membership privately. Just do what God is leading you to do as we sing verses 1, 2, and 6. so glad you were in the Lord's house. Congratulations to Bo and to his family. Thank you all for being with us today. Next Sunday, we continue our series on the Gospel of John with John chapter 4, the story of Jesus visiting with the woman at the well in Samaria. Hope you have a wonderful week. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you this day and to give you peace. Amen.